This is the Vivo V30, a mid-range smartphone, and here I have two of the most popular flagship smartphones on the planet, and there's nearly a 1,000 pound difference between these and the Vivo. So in this video, I'm gonna show you in what areas the V30 stands shoulder to shoulder with these giants, the things that it offers that the flagships do not, and the things that you pay extra money for here on the flagship phones. But in regards to those things, when I show you what the extra money buys you on the flagships, count how many times you say it doesn't matter to you. And if you stick around, I'll even do a blind camera test so you can test your skills and your eye for flagship level photography. Then by the end of this video, you should know whether it's even worth spending that extra thousand pound on a flagship smartphone. So let's find out together. You ready? Let's go. So first off, let's talk about the display on the Vivo V30. It's a large 6.78 inch AMOLED HDR10 Plus certified with 120 hertz refresh rate. Now that's a pretty close size to the iPhone and the Samsung, but check this out. The peak brightness is also on par with the flagships at 2,800 nits, which on paper actually makes it a little bit brighter than the iPhone and Samsung, in fact. Now here's where Vivo has saved you some money. The display is not LTPO, which means its refresh rate is locked in at 60 hertz or 120 hertz, whereas the more expensive phones can adjust from one hertz all the way up to 120 hertz, making those displays more power efficient, but also more expensive. However, check this out. There is a redeeming quality on the Vivo V30 display. It's a lower resolution at 2800 by 1260, making it full HD+, which in reality looks impressively sharp and more than adequate for a phone screen of this size. And because it's a lower resolution, it uses less power, which kind of levels the playing field a little bit. So now ask yourself the question, is QHD Plus and LTPO technology worth the extra money or whether it doesn't matter to you? Okay, let's talk about the frame and the build quality. This in reality is where most of the money is saved. So the Vivo V30 is the thinnest V series smartphone from Vivo to date. And because it has a curved edge display, it feels even thinner than it already is which is pretty crazy. And it's got a nice weight and it doesn't feel cheap. The design on the back looks nice and premium and it's even got a good bit of texture there which makes it less of a fingerprint magnet and less slippery. The buttons feel premium and tactile. Now here's a couple of areas where the flagships definitely have an advantage. The V30 is IP54 splash and dust resistant, whereas the flagships are IP68, which is far more water resistant and dust resistant. Also on the Vivo, there's only a single firing downward speaker in comparison to the stereo speakers on the flagships. However, if you're the type of person who mainly watches content with headphones on, then it might not matter that much. Now, this is the biggest difference between this and the flagships. Both the flagship phones have titanium frames and glass backs, which of course are far more premium and more expensive materials compared to the plastics used on the V30. But if you're the type of person who immediately throws on a screen protector and a protective case, once again, you need to ask yourself a serious question. If you're gonna throw on a case and screen protector, does it really matter? Because if you do like to protect your phone, it doesn't matter what the frame material is. Now here's another area where you get what you pay for with the more expensive phones. It is of course the 3D face unlock on the iPhone and the in-display Sonic fingerprint reader on the Samsung. The Vivo V30 uses the more classic optical fingerprint scanner in display, which uses light to scan your biometrics. There's arguments to be made that the flagship's methods are more secure. But one thing I can tell you for sure is the Vivo V30's unlock is super fast. So once again, ask yourself that question. Does this matter to you? Will it affect how you use your phone? Now check out this definite win for the Vivo V30. There's three things you'll get with the V30 that you won't get in the box with the flagships. It is a pre-installed screen protector, a protective case, and the 80 watt charger in the box. Which brings me nicely onto the speed of power delivery. So both the Samsung and the Apple flagships have huge battery sizes, and you might think based on the thinness of the V30 that surely it can't compete. Well actually, it can. It's got a 5,000 milliamp hour battery. That's the same size as the Galaxy phone and larger than the iPhone 15 Pro Max. But the Vivo's real advantage here is that 80 watt charger that delivers almost double the charging speeds in comparison to the flagship's charging speeds, which is pretty incredible. Yes, there's definitely arguments to be made that the Apple A17 Pro Bionic chip and Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 for Galaxy are more powerful and more power efficient. So let's see how that actually plays out. So the Vivo V30 is one of the first phones to pack the new Snapdragon 7 Gen 3, and it's one step down from the Galaxy Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. So I ran some benchmarks here to see how the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3's 
power consumption compares to the 7 Gen 3. So here are the results. So yes, it's undeniable that the flagship chips are much faster. But one thing that stands out to me about the Vivo V30's chip is how stable it is. It has a very consistent performance based off this 20 minute intensive graphics test so that's impressive and the reality is this extra firepower that you get with the flagships only really comes into play when you're doing heavy gaming or heavy lifting with the phone for example video editing and things like that but if heavy gaming and graphically demanding apps aren't really your bag this sort of thing ain't my bag baby and all you really do is just general social media web browsing taking photos and things like that then the snapdragon 7 gen 3 with the vivo v30s 12 gig of RAM could even be considered overkill. And if you do want to do gaming on the V30, the performance is pretty respectable. You can run higher frame rates with the full HD graphics. But the great thing is you can do it without burning the shape of the camera module into the palm of your hand because it stays cool under pressure. So once again, you need to ask yourself the question, do you really push the limits of your smartphone? And if you don't, ask yourself if this doesn't to you. Okay, now let's talk about the camera and the very interesting camera module here on the V30. It has something I've never seen before. It is Vivo's all new Aura Light, which enlarges the light source area on the flash, which means in theory, you should get a more evenly lit photo when used. And check this out. You can even adjust the color temperature which allows you to create different looks naturally without having to use camera filters. The camera specs of the Vivo V30 are on screen right now, and you can see on paper, the numbers are pretty impressive. Yes, it hasn't got that 200 megapixel sensor that the Samsung has, and it doesn't have a periscope zoom, but the specs are still respectable. And I could ramble on for ages about the apertures, the stabilization methods, and the megapixel counts, but ain't nobody got time for that. So what I think you'll find more interesting is a blind camera comparison. So see if you can guess which is the phone that costs £1,000 less. Okay, so how did Vivo do it in your opinion? Did it stand up to the flagship Titans or did it obviously show its mid-range colors? And if it did do better than expected, again, you need to ask yourself that question if the difference doesn't matter to you. Okay, now let's talk about software. The Apple's ecosystem of software is solid. So solid, in fact, that if you buy into it, it's very hard to escape it. So I don't think it's a fair comparison versus the iPhone as it's completely different. However, in comparison to the Galaxy phone, they both run Android 14 and the user experience will be very familiar to anyone who's used any Android phone in the past. Vivo uses their own FunTouch OS skin, which brings some really nice customization tools to the table. And overall, it's a really nice interface. And one thing you need to know, this phone would be much more expensive if it didn't have the dreaded bloatware. Son of a <laughs> 
But my thoughts on this is you've got to kind of look at this in a positive light because this is one of the ways that manufacturers can reduce the cost of the handset. They basically sell ad space to companies like booking.com and, and other companies like that so that they can sell their phones even cheaper than what they actually should do. So this is definitely something to consider and some of this can be uninstalled and some of it cannot. But there are ways around this. And you know the great thing about Android is the fact that it gives you the ability to change up the entire user experience in the blink of an eye using launchers. And with these launchers, you can hide these annoying apps if they bother you too much. And on screen right now is a video I made about some of the best launchers to try today. So take a look at that when you get some time. And if it's more the storage that you're worried about in regards to these bloatware apps, there's no need to worry. The Vivo V30 storage options go all the way up to 512 gigabytes at a reasonable price. And if you look at the bump up in prices when you jump up the different sizes of storage in comparison to the iPhone, for example, the margins that Apple add are truly insane. Anyway, for the last time, ask yourself the question with all things considered and the things you've learned in this video, do you need to spend an extra thousand pound on a flagship or if it doesn't matter to you. Appreciate you guys for watching this one. I'll see you in the next one. Don't be late.